There is 16 knots breeze and we're doing, oh no, 10 knots. And we are running full main and Frankie and we're going to reef. Yep. Aren't we? We're going downwind. So I thought we might film Shane how we reef when we're going downwind. Go through the process. Do you yeah, want to? Process. Do you want to talk about it while the kids and I do it? Yeah. Well, this is on our boat, and our boat's a little bit different from the standard because we have one a mainsail halyard lock. Two, we have really big cars that slide relatively easy, except sometimes. We do have a locking track that was made in, not quite in the cockpit, but on a bench with a file and all the rest. So we do have a sticky spot in our track. And this will probably relate to a lot of people where your sail gets hung up. And so we'll show you how we deal with getting past, getting our cars past our sticky spot. Um, yeah. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll show you the process, how it works on our boat and how relatively um, undifficult it is. Un no. How easy it is. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's not difficult. But we'll just like show the process. So. And this is quite light airs, but the same process applies in heavy airs too. Yeah, 100%. For us, it's actually a lot easier in the heavy airs because our sticky car goes past the the sticky appendix, track the <laughs> bit of sticky track so. easier okay yeah. and i think the first thing that i do want to mention is because we're going downwind and we don't have backstays yeah. we use the topping lift and the main sheet as our backstay yeah so is that the best place to start yeah and i also use it to uh twist open the the mainsail and I also use it to help stop banging, the boom banging around. And this is a big question uh, lots of people ask is uh, when we go downwind, the boom bangs and all the rest of it. So I guess we'll go and have a look at how it's currently set up just before we read. Okay. So everyone knows I got the, the A-frame uh, main sheet system um, that I really dislike. But here it is actually, if it, we had a, a mainsail track uh, system or this A-frame, the main sheet would be in this position because that's the extent that the track would go to here. Um, it'd be at the end of the track and we'd actually be out of track and easing and twisting the main off. And what happens is, the boom tends to flop and flap and bang and crash and carry on. So how I've stopped that and create and maintained a reasonable mainsail shape is if we look up, you can see on the end of the boom, I've got the topping lift and the sun's in the wrong position. Oh, you can just see it. There's that rope that goes from the end of the boom to the top of the mast and that's tight. And it's lifting the boom up and when it lifts the boom up it actually allows the sail to twist off and it'll actually let the sail flap around in the waves but because that topping lift is tight and my main sheet is tight the boom doesn't bang and crash to prevent and take up any little bits of slack of course i've got the elastic cord um, that goes from the boom down to a cleat um, But that's whether you've got an A-frame bridle or a main sheet system. There are some A-frame setups where they take the windward main sheet off and put it where that shock cord is, um, which is fine, but... It's extra work. It's a lot of extra work and you don't, you, here you can see you don't need it. Right, so let's put a reef in and we'll go through the process. What's the first step, Harry? Got to unclutch the cutting out you gotta ease the Cunningham off, yeah. And why do we have to ease the Cunningham? Uh, so you can pull it up and off the lock. 
well, we gotta unclutch it. Okay, uh, that's the yeah. ready. Not much uh, load on it. Also, then. something to note is that if I had the main sheet on, we'd not actually be able to lift the halyard to get it off the lock. So it's important that there's no load in the leech of the mainsail. The leech is the back edge here. And the load from that comes from either wind pressure and primarily from the uh, main sheet holding it down. But we don't have a lot of leech pressure at the moment, so I don't actually have to ease the main sheet. And this is a good situation for reefing in that my topping lift is already tight, holding the boom up and my main sheet is reasonably tight so stuff isn't going to flap around too much once we're off the lock you'll see that our main sheet will come a little bit loose and we'll snug up on it and during the reefing process we'll make sure that the boom doesn't flap around okay we'll come up on lock so here we have our marks on the halyard so we know that when this mark comes down to here we should be able to come up off the lock open the clutch Okay, so grind it down, Harry. Yeah. 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 Here you go. Right, so now we know our mark is past the thingy. We can now actually ease the halyard and we'll know we're off the lock. Okay. So he's eased the halyard, so that's how difficult it is to get it off the lock. Now we're stuck on the um, sticky bit of track. What you can see now as well is that our mainsail is being wrapped around the stays. Okay. Now this is where speed is very important. Okay. You'll see we still have the spinnaker up and flying. We're still maintaining our angles and speeds so that the faster we go the less pressure there is on the mainsail to wrap the mainsail around these so the easier it is to pull sail down okay start pulling um first reef line in harry ready ollie gonna put it on the wall first all right there we go no missed it ollie on the front yep come back up oh so we missed we missed the lock So Harry has to wind it back up to our mark. Okay, run the mark. Okay. Here we can see our red mark. Ready, Ollie? Now pull some Cunningham on for him. Ready on trip? All right, so, so our Cunningham is attached to the front of the sail. There's our trip line coming out of the sail. And now if you look back here, we just got bags and bags of sail. Yeah, we're there. We're there. Yeah. Because we're running deep downwind, um, we're not pulling full max um, reef line on. So I actually want the, the foot, you can see the foot shape here, uh, quite a bit of belly or curve in here. There you go, Cunningham's coming on now. Yeah, that's good. Now, you can see the sail is actually still pressing against the um, stays here, so we need to pull some main sheet on so we don't wear it out. There you go, you can see the main sail 
touching the side states. So out of habit, I pull the main sheet on till it just doesn't touch. I pull a little bit of main sheet on. Keep going. Might need to ease some topping lift. So, Anna's pulled the main sheet on a bit more to try and get us off, but because we got a lot of topping lift on from when we were at full hoist, we actually need to ease the topping lift to get the main sheet to pull the leech of the sail down. Okay, so now they've let the topping lift go. You can see that that main sheet is now bouncing like that. Okay, main sheet on. Yeah, there you go. So now the main sail is just touching the wire when the gust is on and when I'm in touching the wire it's gently kissing as it's off and then on so it's all good right you can also see I've got set up the windward bow is now set up on my uh, windward bow tack line. You can see my bowsprit tack line is also still connected. So I can actually ease the spinnaker from the windward bow down to the bowsprit while we are sailing um, and don't actually have to change anything. We might have to do that We're starting to surf waves and struggling with the apparent a little bit now. So the that sail curling in was because we accelerated down the wave uh, and even though the autopilot steered it down to follow the apparent because we're forward we're actually just rolling the spinnaker over you know the, instead of the spinnaker being like this at the wind and as we go forward the little bit rolls we've got this whole flat presented bit and as it goes forward that whole flat bit folds That's, I don't know if that's a good explanation or not, but... So, the Frankie, our fractional that we blew up has been fixed thanks to Tropical Sails. It's um, managed to squeeze us in uh, to get it repaired literally the day before we left. St. Martin, thank goodness he did. Gave it to Nettie and Nettie has done an absolutely amazing job of repairing this kite. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's... She's just awesome. Um, so huge shout out to um, Nettie and uh, Ernst for getting that done literally the day before we left. Uh, and thank goodness they have because we have actually sailed on this sail now for, this is day seven with it. So we've done, um, Jesus, my head's not working properly, 900 miles, something like that. 900 or a thousand miles with this up now on this, uh, this crossing. Hello, Anna! Going faster. We're going faster? Yeah. I don't know why, it just, it likes having a reef in. Yeah. Freeze everything up, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, as far as wind pressure is concerned, we could carry that full main another five knots no worries but for some reason as soon as we put that reef in the boat just lights up seems to go nice and fast <laughs> 